Alan Stern. I'm the uh, mission principal investigator. I got interested in Pluto because it was such a great unknown, because it was truly on the frontier, and all the questions were wide open. The Pluto Underground was about getting a mission to Pluto, and I was a part of it because how could you not be? How could you not want to be a part of the exploration of a whole new world? I view the architecture of the solar system is so radically changed since most people went to school and learned about the planets that it, it's almost unrecognizable. We used to think of the solar system as four terrestrial planets on the inside, four gargantuan giant planets on the outside, and then this little Pluto further out, completely a misfit, didn't fall into any of the pattern. But what we've learned is that Pluto was the harbinger, the first the brightest of a whole population of small planets that orbits within the comets in the Kuiper Belt. And as a result, we now think of our solar system as planetary scientists as an interterrestrial planet zone, a middle zone with the giant planets, and this new third zone called the Kuiper Belt, where most of the planets lie. We're learning that Pluto has very active meteorology, that uh, Pluto's formation was very dynamic, that its surface changes uh, over time in a way that few planets other than the Earth actually do. So it's becoming a view in the scientific community that Pluto's among the most active planets in the solar system. The Earth is the weirdo because in the solar system there are six or 10 or 12 worlds that have oceans, vast oceans. The Earth is one of them, but it's the only one that wears its ocean on the outside. All the others wear their ocean on the inside. Next, after Pluto, we're going exploring into the Kuiper Belt, where we expect to make one or two flybys of ancient primordial Kuiper Belt objects, the building blocks of the planets. Uh, we think that this mission will probably last out into the early 2020s. Uh, we have a distance to cross the Kuiper Belt almost as great as the distance we flew from the Earth to Pluto. So it's quite a journey. What could be more interesting than unwrapping a whole new world and seeing what it's like for the first time. And there's only one first time in the exploration of a new planet. And we get a chance to do that, something that hasn't been done in the American Space Program or any other worldwide since the 1980s. It's, it's a real opportunity for 21st century scientists to do something completely new and groundbreaking. The young people are coming on this mission in droves because they see the same thing that we do, which is the chance for uh, making really significant discoveries. We're going to a whole new kind of planet, the most populous class of planet in our solar system, the ice dwarfs. And so the chance to get on board something like that and be a part of first time exploration is, is just so seductive scientifically that we've got long lines of young PhDs, you know, trying to get jobs on New Horizons. Pluto's the hipster's planet. I don't make predictions except for one. My best guess is we're going to find something wonderful. I'm Alan Stern and I'm a Plutophile because I love exploration. <laughs>